Hi Gators, it's Miss Carrie. I'm back with another recipe we can do together. Um, so grab your favorite grown-up and let's take a look at the unofficial Harry Potter cookbook. I thought a fun one to do, a quick one, would be one of the treats from Honey Duke's Treats, the dark chocolate truffles. Now in reality, if you don't like dark chocolate, you can switch the chocolate up to semi-sweet or uh, Jean Duja or anything like that. But today I'm going to show you how I did it. And I used a 60% chocolate, which in reality is kind of on the sweet side. Not as sweet as a chocolate chip from Hershey's, but kind of close. Normally I prefer 70% and you'll find that number on the front of your chocolate bars uh, because this way at 70% you get a strong chocolate flavor and you can add uh, a little bit of sweetness without overwhelming um, the chocolate with sugar. So believe it or not, you can have too much sugar. Sounds crazy, but it's true. All right, so let's take a look at what we're going to need. You're going to need your chocolate. And this time I used your deli. And I'm going to admit that I cheated a little bit and I used my food processor to chop it. Best invention ever. But if you don't have one, I'm going to show you how to chop it by hand. Just use your handy dandy chef's knife. We'll be using heavy cream. And these are some of the tools that we could use. I have two different kinds of piping bags, a pastry tip, an offset spatula for removing the truffles. And in case you don't have these two things, a melon ball and always a silicone spatula. Hi friends, we're back. Uh, this is a good time to get your helpful adult assistant because we're gonna be using Big Knife. Here's our chocolate. I do it like this because it's quicker. Uh, this one's actually a little bigger, so I'm gonna put it on the bottom. I'm gonna go at an angle and I'm gonna chop this fine. If you have big pieces and little pieces, the big pieces won't melt the same rate as the little pieces, and it'll take you a while. So we're just going to crunch down. Keep your fingers away. It's hard to use proper knife skills when chopping chocolate because it's super hard and shoots out all over the place. Normally when I use my knife, I curl my fingers and chop like this. That doesn't work with really hard chocolate. Now resist the urge to go like this with your knife across the board because that will dull your blade. So use the back of your knife, gather it all up. and rotate, almost like a fan. Okay. Notice back of the knife. All right, now I'm gonna leave this here I'm going to put my strainer on it just to remind me because I'm going to flavor our heavy cream with something. So I'm off to wash my hands and I'll meet you at the stove. Hi guys, so we're back at the stove, you and your grown up. Remember anything with a knife or a stove or fire, it's always good to have them around. It's nice to have them around anyway, but safety first. So here we have our cream. Now, there are a lot of things that you could flavor it with. Any kind of extract, I have vanilla, almond, cinnamon, rose hips here. Uh, I don't know about rose for this because it's a really delicate flavor, but the other things could certainly uh, do well. Also, you can just buy instant espresso and you'll get that mocha flavor, which is really nice. Mocha is chocolate with coffee. Also, I have loose teas. This is a floral tea that I have. I put in a little tea ball. Here, I would just let it float. We have cinnamon sticks, which is the bark of a tree, and cardamom pods, and these are cloves. Today, I'm going to flavor it with cinnamon sticks and cardamom pods. It's really, I, I can't say that there's a specific uh, quantity that you should put in, but I'm doing about a teaspoon of whole pods. You could crush them first if you want, but I think the whole pods are just fine. I'll put in a couple of cloves. I think that cloves are a very winter flavor. So I'm going to stick with that hot 
summer thing we have going on right now. But really anything that you could think of that you enjoy, you can put in. Uh, Earl Grey is a big one. People really love that. So now what I'm going to do is bring it to a boil. Uh, I need it nice and hot and I need to start releasing the oils and the flavorings that are inside of um, my spices here. What I'm going to do after I bring it to a boil is turn it to low, put the top on, and let it steep for 15 minutes. If I just turned it off, I wouldn't get very much flavor. I really want it to sit in there and absorb. So I'm getting those little bubbles. Uh, when it's at a simmer, which is what it's at right now, it has little bubble, bubbles. If it wants to come to a boil, you get big bubbles all around. Sometimes, depending on the liquid, you'll just get bubbles on the edges and then it'll come in. But heavy cream is pretty fatty and the whole thing usually goes to a bubble right away. As you can see, it's boiling up now. Uh, some people swear if you put a wooden spoon on top, it will keep things from boiling over. I've only seen that work with water but it sure does work, so you could try that. Okay, now I have a great boil coming on. I'm going to turn that heat to low. Unfortunately, I have an electric stove. If you are lucky enough to have a gas stove, when you put it to low, it will go to low immediately. Mine's gonna take a minute. So when the bubbles calm down, I'll put the lid on. If I do it ahead of time, it's just gonna bubble over through my lid and make mess, set off the smoke alarm, all kinds of fun things like that. So, okay, it's gonna to start to come down. I'm gonna put on my lid. I'm gonna get all that good flavor brewing in there. And I'll see you in 15 minutes. Welcome back. Take a look at what we have going on here. This is my infused heavy cream. It smells delicious. It, it doesn't look delicious, it looks kind of gross, but it's really, really good. It even took on a slightly uh, more tan hue, and that's from the cinnamon and the cardamom that are in there. It smells really great. So this is where you need your grown-up. Now, right here, actually, I brought this out to show you. This is a chinois. It is a super ultra-fine mesh, and it's for making any kind of uh, very important consomme, stock, uh, jam, jelly, preserve, something that you really want strained, that you just want the purest essence of flavor with nothing else in it. I often use this. However, I doubt a lot of you have that. So I brought this out. You can even get this at the dollar store and it works almost as good. You can see it has not as fine a gauge. So it will let little particles in, but it will keep out my uh, cardamom and it'll keep out my cinnamon sticks. So I'm going to be careful not to put the chocolate on the stove top. I'm going to pour it right over here. Press out anything that's in here. And I'm just going, I have it on the edge, only the center was done. Start. stirring in the middle. Now, you might see recipes that tell you to use a whisk. Don't use a whisk. It will incorporate air. It has an excellent chance of making the chocolate grainy. You have all kinds of issues that could happen with that. Just be patient and use your spatula. This is really hot cream and it should melt everything. If it doesn't, you can put it on top of a double boiler, like you could refill this, let me put this away, with hot water, put this on top and just stir it. You could put it in a microwave for 30 seconds at a time, no more than 30 seconds. Once you burn a piece of chocolate in there, it's burnt. It flavors the whole thing. It gets little crystallization. It almost tastes like little charcoal briquettes. It's terrible. I'm gonna keep stirring this. I think it's still going to melt. There's very small pieces in there and I'll show you it when it's glossy. Bye. Hi everybody. So I ended up putting the chocolate truffle mixture in the microwave. I used it at 10 seconds and that was enough. Then I mixed it, it was very liquidy. 
and I had to put it in the fridge for about 10 minutes. This is pretty much gonna be your life when you're making truffles. You gotta get it really hot, then you gotta get it cool. Right now, it's losing its sheen because it's getting firmer. It's at what we call a ribbon stage. I pull it up and it lands back on top in a ribbon. So if it does that, it's definitely getting there. If it's too firm, you can't pipe it. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to fill a pastry bag. If you don't have a pastry bag, put this in the refrigerator until it's firm enough to scoop. Just the same way that you would scoop um, like a, a cookie mixture. So I'm going to use this. This happens to be a Wilton bag, but it really doesn't matter which bag you use. I have these, I think they're probably better for the environment, but I don't like them because you should soak them in bleach because they hold on to bacteria. We don't need any more germs now. So this is my half inch circle tip. They have all different numbers. Let's see what this one is. I don't even know if I can see this one. This one is 808, uh, but it really doesn't matter as long as it's just a perfect circle. If you have any of the fluted edges, it's going to ruin your truffle. You're gonna to have to re-roll it by hand. So let's start with this. Now, if you're by yourself, it's easiest to just take your bag. I'm going to move this so I don't drop it accidentally. I'm gonna aim where you think this should be. You might have to cut it twice, but it's better to cut it twice than cut it too big the first time. Because then your tip will flow right through. And you are going to need a tip because these bags will go to an oval shape. Still tastes good, but doesn't look like truffle. Oh, see, I'm a little short. Let's see. Ah, oh, there we go. You want it flush with the edge, just like that. Then I'm going to fold my tip over. Now, I need to make it pliable enough so that I can get it shaped, but if it's too warm, it'll just flow right out and look like chocolate sauce, but we need it to hold its shape. So what I'm gonna do is twist and then put that in. That will keep everything from coming out the bottom. Now in cooking school, we were really not allowed to do that. We had to fill it by hand by ourselves, but I'm not mean like that, so I wanna show you a quick trick. Just put it on the edge of any kind of a cup. I'm using my measuring cup because I had it out. Put it in. Try really hard not to spill, but sometimes it happens. There are worse things than getting chocolate somewhere. You get to eat all the parts that don't make it in the bag. Now, you might wonder why I didn't fill the bag up to the top. There's a lot of reasons, but the most important one is my hands, remember, I told you in the bread baking tutorial. My hands are about 98 degrees. Certain people have hotter hands or colder hands than others. Your hand is going to be touching this chocolate. Your hand is going to be melting that part of the chocolate or at least getting it warmer than the rest. So if I'm squeezing the bag like this, these parts, if they're held too often, will get runny. So the center of your truffle will come out firm and the sides will be runny and it looks kind of gross. So I'm gonna twist the top I'm going to set it down and get my sheet tray. So I'm holding the bag in the crook of my hand. Be careful, your hand is going to heat up this chocolate. You aim with that, hold it steady, half inch above, pipe, release all the pressure and hope it comes off. Okay, it did. Pipe, do not move your hand. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Release all the pressure, and then again, hope it comes off because it's chocolate and it's difficult. Now, I'm gonna show you the things that happen when you make a little mistake. They are still delicious, so don't get rid of it. But if you move the bag up and down, I'm running out of pipes here, but if you move the bag up and down, it doesn't look as appealing. Maybe your wizard hat. We'll think of that as a wizard's hat. But you can always fix it with your melon baller. So I'm going to put these in the fridge. I'm going to collect the rest and show you how to scoop it, then we'll enrobe it. I am back. 
These are our piped truffles. This is our truffle mix that I put in the refrigerator for quite a while so it would get nice and firm. This is my melon baller or scoop. This would work. Just put it in and give it a good turn and hope it comes out. I put my gloves on for you guys. This is a messy one. So you're going to want to do that. Another thing you can do, oops, this one got stuck. You can roll them in your hands after this. I'll pipe, I'll scoop a few more before I show you how to roll them perfectly. You would take it, just do it like this. It's a pretty perfect little circle. They have candy molds where you just pour the chocolate in and they are really fun and everything comes out perfect, but that's too professional. Let's have some fun at home. So here's the difference. This is a little quicker actually and cleaner, but I'm going to get their tops rounded. I don't like a non-round top, but I do like a flat bottom. It sits easier. So here are our truffles. They look pretty good. I'm going to take these off now. There's a lot of ways that you can enrobe them. You can melt them in chocolate. You can melt chocolate, rather, and dip them in that, and I'll show you that. But there's a simple way, too, that actually tastes better and it's just cocoa. Now, if you use plain cocoa, it's, it's not very flavorful. It kind of tastes like unsweetened chocolate, which is very bitter. But I have a trick, and there's two kinds. This is better for brownies and things like that. This is better for coating, something simpler. Since we used cardamom and cinnamon sticks, whole cardamom pods, they were the little green pods, and cinnamon sticks in the, um, cream to infuse the flavor, I'm going to put a little bit of this in powdered sugar, and then I'm going to put the cocoa in. It's really just personal taste, so I'm going to eyeball it, but I don't want to carry that flavor over. Cardamom is delicious, but a little goes a long way. So I'm going to mix these two. Now, if you wanted, you could just leave it at this and roll your truffles. I'll roll maybe two like that, and then I'll put in the cocoa. Here is just confectioner sugar, cardamom, and cinnamon. I'm gonna take one of these, pop it in, roll it around. I should have left my gloves on, but I don't wanna put them back on. This will be sweeter. And you will taste the cinnamon and the cardamom on this a lot more than when I put the cocoa in because the cocoa is such a strong flavoring agent that it really overtakes everything. But it tastes good too. Let's do a few like this. So, uh, you know what? I'll do four like this, then I'll do a few with the cocoa, and then I'll show you how to dip them in chocolate. They have chocolate dipping forks that look almost, they're cute. They come out with a tube, and then they have a spiral. And you can use those. They sell them everywhere. Um, but for most of us, little forks work. I'm using hors d'oeuvre forks. So this is this look. Now I'll put in my cocoa. Again, I used about a quarter cup for the confectioners. I'm gonna use approximately that, maybe a little bit more. Oops. And I 
mix it. I like how it looks when it's kind of rustic looking. Now these truffles um, could be used in a lot of things. If you bake a lava cake, a lot of times the center is a truffle. Usually a truffle that has white chocolate in it because white chocolate melts so easily and white chocolate isn't really chocolate, but when you have a lava cake, and I used to make a ton of them when I was the executive pastry chef at the Royal Tin in Manhattan, we just popped a truffle in the center. So there's your little secret hint for your next dinner party. And the last guy. Okay, anyway, so these are ganache. You could melt this and pour it on top of a cupcake or a regular cake. You could also take this and whip it with a paddle, not a whisk, but with a paddle in a KitchenAid or something like that, a stand mixer. And it would be about two shades lighter and you could use it as frosting. So those are two other hints. Okay, I'm gonna melt the chocolate now for those and show you how to dip.